This is our last New Deal video. Very rare that you get New Deal videos that have a balanced point of view, giving you the libertarian slash classical liberal view, and also the progressive slash modern liberal point of view for the New Deal. We talked about in the last video, New Deal 2, Second New Deal. They have these programs to create jobs, painting murals, writing stories. Sure, maybe it's in the, the modern liberals going to say, look, the, the private sector couldn't do this at the time. So someone needed to provide the money to create these jobs, to create this art. And so the government had to step in. Well, the reason why the government had to step in is because they had messed with the economy so much that they had pushed out the private sector. So the private sector couldn't do that anymore. By the way, so the private sector, yeah, you're right, can't really get involved. And so the government steps in and pays these people to do these things. And the argument I said against that was, Imagine that you are paying your tax dollars to pay for someone to go do paintings. Like, hey, it's great. I'm glad that you're painting over there, but I've got my kids to feed. I've got my bills to pay. How about I just keep my money and pay for real necessities as opposed to giving my tax dollars to some guy down the street? The modern liberal is going to say, hey, you can afford to, to share. All right, well, let's make it a little bit more complicated because it's not as easy as I'm just giving my money to the guy down the road. So we know that the government is borrowing money going into debt to pay for these artists and to pay for these play writers, but it's not getting it through taxes because you can't generate this revenue through taxing when people aren't making any money. It's not like the government's taxing me today and paying this guy down the street. Not going to happen because no one has any money. So where is this money coming from if they're not taxing? So the government is borrowing the money. They're going into debt to pay for the artists, to pay for the riders, to stimulate, right? We're trying to increase aggregate demand. And when demand goes up, people have money and they spend more money and it's going to create new businesses and the economy is going to get booming. Even though it doesn't, that's the theory under Keynesian economics. So they borrow the money, they pay for it. And they say, hey, we'll pay it back later. So guess who is actually going to pay it back later? The artist today painting the mural, the, the, the writer writing the story today, it's not me that's paying for it. It's not the painter that's paying for it. It's his children, when they grow up, and uh, in the theory, the economy is back to normal, then the government's going to nail him with taxes to pay off the debt. The government's going to take the taxes to pay back the bank. So the story writer, the artist working now, he's not taking money from me. He's taking the money from my my children and your children. We are saddling our posterity, our future generations with debt to pay for a guy to paint, to pay for a guy to write, not something that's necessary just so that we can stimulate demand and supposedly bring the economy back together. What do you think about that? What's your point of view? And oh, hey, guess what? We can't pay for it today, but guess what? We'll just make our kids pay for it. And the other way that they can pay for it is just to print money. They print money and give it to them. And now what that does is remember when we increase the supply of money, prices go, or we it, the, the prices will go up or the prices will drop. Price of goods generally rise. But really what's happening when you increase the supply of money is you are devaluing the currency. When you print more money, money becomes worth less. So the government can borrow money today and saddle this debt on your children, or the government can just print money. And the secret here is they just print a bunch of money and they give it out. Well, guess what? You find out that, oh, hey, all that money you have saved in the bank, it's worth less. Hey, that million dollars that I saved in the bank, it doesn't buy what it used to buy. It's only worth $500,000. So this is a secret hidden tax. I've got a video on my YouTube page if you want to Google that up and find out that inflation is just a hidden tax. It's another way that the government can steal money from you to, to create programs in the meantime. Social Security Administration, this is not a second deal, second New Deal program. When people get old, they can't keep working. So how are they supposed to pay for the rent? How are they supposed to pay for their food? How are they supposed to pay the medical bills? So we create basically a government-sponsored retirement program. So when you're too old to work, the government will send you money every month to help you out. Here's how it works. You pay into the system while you're working, your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s. You pay into it every month. It comes out of your paycheck. There's no way around it. And the government takes that money and then it will give it to you when you retire. Now, technically, the money that you're paying in right now is going to other people. And when you retire, the money that people are paying in then will be for you. So when you're in your 20s, you're actually giving the money to the people that are in their 70s. And then when you're in the 70s, your money is going to come from people that are working in their 20s. That's the way Social Security works. Sounds like a good program, but as we've explained in all these videos, there's always going to be a catch. So let's imagine worker A, worker B. Worker A works for 30 years, pays into it every single paycheck for 30 years. And then worker B works for five years, every single paycheck for five years. So they both pay into it. Guess what? According to the Social Security Administration law created under the Second New Deal by FDR, they both get paid out the same. How fair is that? 
Sure, it's a retirement program. Sure, it's going to help out people in need. But this is a mandatory bylaw program that makes you pay in and you get paid out the same. Is this fair? This guy paid a lot of money in, but he doesn't get any more than this guy. They both get the same. Does that sound like the best program possible? Sure, it's going to help out people who are poor, people with low income. It definitely does. But this is simply just robbing from one person to pay for another. I'm paying, basically, if you want to break it down, this guy, part of his paycheck is going to pay for this guy's retirement. Now, the progressive view is going to be like, look, you can afford to do it. And it's good for us to share and help out. Sounds like communism, sounds like socialism. It is socialism. Whereas somebody's like, no, look, you should just pay for your own retirement. Look, here are the facts. So the classic liberal, the libertarian. So again, the progressive is going to say, look, deal with it. You have more money. You can afford to share. That's the progressive point of view. That's the modern liberal. That's fine. The libertarian is going to say, look, the classic liberal says, look, like Joe Biden. Look, he always says, look, I think I'm saying look too much. We all know that we're going to be old someday. We all know that we can't work someday so that we all know, we all know it's a fact. We're going to have to plan for our retirement someday. You listening to this video are going to be old and you're not going to be able to work and you're going to need to be able to pay your rent. You're going to be able to pay for your food. You're going to pay your medical bills. This has existed since the cavemen. Thousands of years we've known that, hey, someday I'm going to be too old. I need to have a plan when I'm too old or I'm just going to have to die. You need to start saving now. We know that's the facts. We all need to save for our own retirement. But the government is going to step in with the Social Security Administration. We don't need the government to step in. We all know that we need to save. And up until the 1930s, everyone saved on their own. That was the plan. You just do your own thing. You don't need the government to remind you that, hey, you got to save money because someday you're going to get old. Oh, wait a second. I'm going to get old someday? Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to get old and I can't work? I didn't know that. I didn't plan for that. Everyone knows that you're going to get old and you're going to need to have money. You need a plan. If you didn't plan on it, then that's probably your fault. But that's not what we have. We have a government that steps in, a government that is paternalistic and tries to take care of everybody, even when everybody makes stupid choices. You don't really need the government to get involved. But we do. We have a government that basically is just going to take from one person and give to the other person. The government's going to say, hey, we're going to take your money and make sure that this other person can retire because they didn't save enough. That's the libertarian that's the classical argument of, hey, just save on your own. We don't need a government that does this for us. It takes money and gives to other people. According to the AP, this is what you want to put on your test. It's the greatest program ever. FDR is a saint. According to reality, it's pyramid scheme. Google it. And the people that are watching this video, more than likely, Social Security is not going to exist. It's not going to exist in my lifetime. When I'm old enough to retire, the money's going to be gone. The money's already gone, but they're playing games right now. So for sure, during your lifetime, you will pay in. There will be money taken out of every single paycheck, and they're probably already taking money out of your paycheck. And you think, like, well, good. At least when I retire, I'll get some money. Wrong. You are only going to pay in. It is not going to come back to you. That is what is going to happen. This is not the greatest thing ever. FDR is not a saint. Now, could they have made Social Security work better? Yes. Have they? No. Let's talk about the people that loved Franklin Delano Roosevelt FDR. And these are the Democrats. And these are going to be the people that really benefited from his socialist policies, benefited from his New Deal programs. Remember in the last video, I talked about there's winners and there's losers. So the winners are definitely going to like this guy. They're going to vote for this guy. The winners were workers. Remember, minimum wage, limiting the hours. Farmers, we, we limit production. We put in price floors. We protect farmers. Northern African Americans or Northern Blacks. Now, keyword here is Northern. He helps out Northern Black, which is great. This is a major breakthrough in American history to bring together equality and to bring people into a society and have people working together. But the keyword here is Northern. He does not help out Southern Blacks because he does not want to make Southern Democrats mad. Southern Democrats living in the segregated South, living in the Jim Crow South, do not want equality for Blacks. They do not want equality or equal income or equal rights for Southern Blacks. So FDR making a political calculated decision, whether you like it, whether you don't like it, this is what happened. Is it evil? Yeah, you could say it's evil, but you could also say, hey, this is what he had to do to get things done. He only helps out Northern Blacks. It's great that he helped out Northern Blacks, but in only helping out Northern Blacks, he's basically supporting racism in the South. Just the facts. There's no other way of looking at it. You can say, hey, at least he did something because other, I mean, it was less than 10 years ago, a progressive Democrat in Woodrow Wilson, well, just a little bit over 10 years, a progressive Democrat in Woodrow Wilson was showing the most racist video ever or movie in the White House. He was watching the most racist birth of a nation. What? Don't watch it. But if you watch it, it's probably the, the most racist film ever made. He watches it in the White House and talks about how it's the greatest thing ever. And so we fast forward about 10 years and we have this 
Democrat who is at least trying to fight for equality. So that's a step forward. Is it a big step forward? Probably not. Again, the socialism laws help certain groups of people. And they all voted for him, and they all loved him. And so basically, he gets jobs. He helps uh, create fair wages for these specific groups. But there's a catch. And that one catch is great. I will help out certain groups of people. I will help out people in the economy. But those people must align themselves with the Democratic Party. You must vote Democrat. And in doing so, he gets himself elected. He gets Congress elected as Democrats so he can continue to pass socialist progressive laws. That's the scam. That's the way that it works. And literally, if you were registered as a Republican, no job for you. If you weren't voting the way that they told you to vote, no job for you. You did not get a New Deal program. These are facts. You can look this up. It's not going to be in your history textbook. It's not going to be in your AP guidelines. But you look at any other real text from that studies the New Depression, and you're going to see that most of these New Deal programs were given only to Democrats. And this is not, I mean, it's a spoil system. It's very common, not as common as it is today. Uh, but think about this. Imagine. I mean, that's common then, but that, this is egregious. This is an exaggeration. This is way overboard in what he did. Basically buying the voters, helping out one group, hurting another. Imagine Trump 2020. I'm not going to go pro-Trump or bad Trump. And I know some people have seen Trump on your screen and you're freaking out. And sometimes I like to do it just to wake you up. Anyway, so let's just think. If in, this is just a hypothetical. We're not saying we're for Trump or bad Trump or good Trump or orange man bad. We're not going into that. What we are saying, imagine, this is a scenario that has not existed hypothetically in 2020. We know that the economy shut down for the coronavirus. We know there's bad times in 2020. We know coronavirus. Imagine this, though. Imagine all the bad things and the economy collapses and everyone is struggling. Everyone. Everyone is struggling. And Trump says, all right, but only Republicans get money. Imagine what the reaction would be in the media. Imagine what the reaction would be in the public. What would your neighbors think? What would you think if he said, yeah, I know the economy has collapsed and we're going to give money to help people out. We're going to create programs. We're going to create jobs, but we're only going to give those to Republicans that vote for me. Imagine if he did that. Imagine the uproar. Imagine how crazy people would have gone. It's unimaginable. It's hard to imagine. Like we can imagine. And it's bad. We know it would all be bad. Even Republicans would agree you can't do that. Even the, the, the strongest Trump supporters would say you can't do that. FDR did that. The guy that the AP guidelines, that your history textbook, that the media, that most modern liberals praise and say, save the world. He only held Democrats. I mean, <laughs> we can't make this stuff up. Like, why would I make this up? Why would I create that storyline? It's in the, it's not in the history books. It's in the media's not going to tell you. But if you read any real history from real historians, you're going to find out that's what he did. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And there's a lot of people that didn't like FDR. You have the Northern Democrats who were racist that didn't like giving equality and opportunities to Northern Blacks. Now, the Southern Democrats, they liked him because he did not go into the South. FDR did not deal with Jim Crow. FDR did not deal with segregation in the South. He let the South continue to do its thing. But many of the racist Democrats in the North said, hey, you know, we don't like this equality. We don't want to compete for jobs with African Americans. Also, they were upset that he was going too far with his policies. He was basically a king. We'll talk about that in a second. And then some people didn't like him because they didn't think he did enough. So talking about him being a king, you can see FDR as a king, basically canceling the Constitution. And many of these New Deal programs and many of these programs that he created, he did not have authority to create. He was not allowed to create. And the Supreme Court was ruling against him, saying, like, you can't do that one. You can't do that one. He got frustrated. He got upset. He felt like he was being held back. He and Congress were being held back. They wanted to do more. And he was doing, abusing his power. And the Supreme Court was holding him back. And so he comes up with a plan and says, all right, here's what the problem. The, the, the Supreme Court keeps having a more majority that votes against me. The majority of Supreme Court justices are voting against me. They're stopping me from doing what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack the court with more justices so that I have a majority. I'm going to get people that agree with me. So when they vote on whether I'm breaking the law or not, I'm going to win. And so even though in the Constitution, he cannot do this. He's not allowed to add justice to the Supreme Court. He's going to do it anyway. He's going to try to do it anyway so that he can basically be a king, do whatever he wants. Now, even Congress is saying, ah, I think you're going a little too far. It doesn't matter. He's going to continue to push for it. Eventually, a showdown between he and the Supreme Court and Justice, Associate Justice Owen Roberts basically says, all right, we're going to let you do some stuff. 
And this is his phrase, a switch in time, save nine. Save nine justices. We did not pack the court. We're going to go along with some of the craziness, but you can't add justices. They reach a compromise, which is not even really a compromise because they basically caved. Owen Roberts, great. He, he saved the nine justices, but he's also a coward in this situation. And so then FDR now has pretty much approval to do any of these crazy programs that he wants. Now, when he gets that authority, the problem is people start to realize these, these programs aren't working anyway. And so as much as he wants to create new programs and get more involved in the economy, it ain't working. And so people really aren't around it. So great, you have all this power, but we don't want you to do that stuff. Last but not least, dust storm damages in the 1930s and 1940s. So out here in the West, you have to till up land. So the soil is not very good, but if you run a plow, you can pull up good soil so that you can get the plants into the nutrients and you can start growing food. We talked about this in the expansion during unit six. And so now you can grow food where normally you weren't able to grow it. But through over plowing and harvesting too much, and then in the combination with a drought, the land dries up and literally blows away. All the soil literally blows away. If you've seen the movie Inception, you see kind of a modern version of this. In, but So too much farming, combination with the drought, the land blows away, so now you can't farm. And if you're a farmer, you can't grow crops. That means you can't sell food. And if you're not selling, you don't have any money. That means you can't pay your bills. You can't pay for your farm's mortgage. So you get kicked off of your farm. And I mean, here's some, these are real examples of it. And so we have what are called the Okies and they move west seeking opportunity because this land's gone. And this was what we read about in the Grapes of Wrath, the people struggling, the people that were not getting any help from the government while the government was helping other people and the plight of these people and the struggles that they face. And you can see the, the migrant mother, famous picture from the Great Depression, talking about these Okies searching for opportunity, just trying to survive, just need some help just to get going. It's not like they were lazy. They just needed a chance. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of the new deal. And we'll move on to World War II next.